The offense was cold for the Bulldogs, but the coffee's hot. Get your coffee now from High Point Roasters in New Albany, Mississippi. Go to highpointroasters.com. Uh, pretty tough day. That's an understatement. Hey, it was a good old-fashioned tail whipping. It happens sometimes. Uh, been on both sides of it. And it's never fun when you're on that side of it, but it does happen. What this is, is a very basic look at some early stuff in the game that really set the tone for LSU and kind of set the tone for the whole game. State didn't execute very well on offense. All of the content on this channel is made possible by your local Mississippi Farm Bureau insurance agents. Farm Bureau, go! With the home team. Defensively, they did a few good things early, but the offense sort of kind of put them in bad spots. Couldn't stay on the field. Defense started wearing out. LSU is good, and they played really good football, good assignment ball. They were ready. Quarterback made perfect throws, got off to a great start. I mean, LSU got off to a fantastic start and played well, and they're very good and very talented. State did not execute. Mental errors all over the place, and it's trying to find themselves, and, man, that thing just got out of whack quick. So here they are, and if you're on YouTube, check the timestamps on the bottom. You can jump from play to play and in the description as well. Let's take a look. First series, trying to run it off left edge here, uh, around left end, and get caught trying to pull a guard and tackle, but somebody's not in the right place. I actually got a pretty good block from the receiver there, Justin Robinson, I'll show you that. Um, but much made about this, just looks like um, you're trying to run guard and tackle counter, pulling both the right guard and right tackle, counter his step here and follow those around the edge right there and what's happening is dollar bill backside tackle he's pulling this way so it leads you to believe it shouldn't be the case he winds up going between two teammates pulling so both tackles are pulling each way i think somebody gets the wrong call right there uh, it does look like it's probably dollar bill on the left side i don't know that on the call but you know right here on alignment if you you know if you get this let's say if he's you know, helping here where he's supposed to be up and to the linebacker, which I think that's what you would do play side on this. And then you're pulling, you know, guard and tackle around. You might have a little bit better chance of finding a hole right there. But when he's not there, you do get sort of an early take on here from the end on a pulling guard. Um, and now there's nobody helping up on the edge up here on this linebacker, see? So one person's out of place. What's going to happen is as the run comes this way, um, he steps down in, but he doesn't make the play. The unblocked linebacker doesn't make the play. It's actually the end who took on the guard, LaSoya, throws him off and gets to the ball carrier back here behind, you know, the other puller. This is what I was talking about here. Robinson does a nice job, comes in here and throws a block. You got to be careful there. Get that called. Anyway, uh, somebody going the wrong way, a little bit of a bust, and uh, on that counter. The uh, second down play, and the thing to remember here when you kind of look at this is this is actually eight-man protection. Okay, so two tight, five down, two tight ends, and a back. That's eight-man protection right here with only two deep routes. So basically what you're trying to do is get everybody, you've got them in a box on formation, uh, what I mean is all those defenders, three with their hands down, two standing up. So you got five on the front. You got three more walked up, right? So because of the two tight formation, you got all the defenders here in a box. And you're trying to make this look like strong play action, wide zone to get them going there. Peel around, protect, and raise up and hit one of these deep balls, what it looks like to me. I can't see what the routes are. But eight man protect and, and watch what happens here is you get a bunch of penetration and run through and there's no setting up and throwing anything here and you know just get out of there and throw it away. The the first breakdown that you see is going to be uh, inside of the, the tight end um, here with his hand on the line of scrimmage. He is, you know, I, I would assume with everything stepping gap over left to that wide zone look, I would guess he should do that too. But you see what he's doing right here? He's sort of helping with the tight end on the end and what's happening is the right tackle is stepping all the way down to help the guard on the nose if i were to back this up it's not the best look i get it it's a tv look a coach could show you the all 22 but because it's wide zone what you're getting is right guard is down on the nose okay and right tackle is coming down to combo off that nose everybody's a gap over here with this wide zone look 
Well, if that's the case, then this tight end it would be gap over as well. So this defender with his hand down shoots this gap between tight end and tackle and nobody gets him. All right, you see that he's just straight through, gone. And so this is the first really urgent breakdown right there. And that's just on the snap, responsibility, who do I block based on this formation when we snap this football? So there's a mental error there. The other thing that's happening is the tackle and the guard step down and combo this player. Once the guard Lasoya passes him off, uh, Jones is here and this player still gets penetration too. So even though it's combo, you really don't get him blocked. Uh, the backside really shouldn't matter, but he's the major problem, but he's fixing to be a problem too. Uh, another thing that's happening is tight end has a good linebacker who's going to throw his block too, and he, now the pursuit's on. There's no setting up, and there's nobody to throw the ball to. Now we got third and ten, and uh, motioning to a three-receiver route. Well, three by one, but bunch of receivers. Pocket's there. Route's not there. Not on the same page receiver. He's going one to you know one hole over one space over show you real quick here it's actually a pretty good job in protection you're going to get one-on-one tackle versus end and cam jones kind of rides that arc puts him on that arc a little bit outside handle him don't let him go and now push back and he can push up in the pocket if he wants to and your other protection is held up you got combo center guard right here doing a good job uh, Nick Jones is one-on-one, -on -one, and if you look here and keep an eye on Nick, he actually gets a hand to the face. It's pretty clear. A lot of times this is getting called, especially when it's out in the open. Nick right here on this defensive tackle. So if you'll keep your eye on those right there. So you know, you're getting a nice little hands to the face. Uh, doesn't get called. Oh, well, you know, it's just one of those. But pocket's pretty good right there. Five-man protect versus a four-man rush. You actually have time to sit in there. And, you know, ball coming out just a little bit early on a curl route. He's in that gap, and the receiver's going to the other. And I will say that this is something we have not seen a ton of in Will's career so far, and that is him throwing to spaces where other guys are going to different places, like they're in, not on the same page. We haven't seen that a ton. The route um, – you know, here's basically what looks like 4-3, right? So he's a safety in the middle field, deep third, deep third. So it's cover three. There's your three deep. Then you have the safety underneath. You motion here to three, and you're going to get somebody open because they don't rotate the coverage. So, you know, the top receiver is going to run this off, affect the safety. And then what you're getting is curl route here. It's kind of like flat curl concept, really. Old-fashioned flat curl where you read the underneath defender. And that's what Will's doing right here. So you get the runoff, here goes flat curl. And flat, and pulls a flat defender, and you're reading off him. And the idea is if he stays underneath, I'm going to curl right here in this zone, and i got a way to, you know, to uh, complete the ball in here in this hole. Problem is, I think the receiver, once you get the runoff, the receiver sees another defender here, and so he thinks instead of this being the throwing lane and this being the gap, it's going to be over here behind him in the middle of the field. So he's like going one space over, if that makes sense. Will's putting it in front right behind the flat defender. And there you see receivers like he's trying to go over here. Will's expecting the curl to be here. So just not on the same page. And I think Will rushed it a little bit. And that's what happens when you, like a play before, you have eight-man protect and you don't get protected. Here is a second and ten, uh, their offense versus State's defense. And uh, State's trying to give just a little bit of confusion pre-snap where the boundary corner is less cushion. The field corner, a lot of cushion with two safeties in the middle field. And on the snap, what's happening is he's coming up and you're rotating over to a cover three. So just trying to rotate that coverage on the snap, show him a little bit of a look with four underneath, one, two, three, four underneath, only going to rush three. See there, so that's your call right here on second and ten. Um, we'll watch it, and then I'll show you a couple things. And the coverage really drops soft. Take away deep ball. He just comes underneath second 10 and gets almost all of it back right there. And uh, routes, whether it's called or whether there are just, you get go outside. You get curl here. I don't know, again, that might be an adjust with the safety over the top. You get go here. 
and you get curl backside. And again, that may be an adjust with a soft corner. I don't know. But what it does is if you'll notice where this ball snapped, 10 yards up here on the 27 is the line to gain. And all of your coverage is basically going to drop back to the first down stick. Uh, if you'll watch this. So just kind of like a like 30,000 foot hot air balloon overview of this is zone coverage that on the snap, you don't get home with three rushers. And so at this point, if you look, you know, your coverage has kind of dropped back here to the first down stick and you're just giving all this up, basically. Just giving it up is what you're doing. And sometimes you have to do that, right? Especially when you're trying to take away home run balls. So you complete it right now, three and a half yards, really four yards, well, three and a half, past the line of scrimmage. And so you got to make that stop right there. Good ball carrier spins out of it and gets a lot of it back. All right, so you get them in a third down and two after that play. And this is an interesting one also. Um, State with a pressure look defensively on third and two. And what they're actually doing is playing man-to-man coverage out here with a free safety in the middle of the field. We'll watch the play, show you a couple things about it. Uh, first thing that happens is two drop out to spy on either side. You get a four-man rush that doesn't get through. He buys time, makes people miss, and finds a late throw to his running back. Missed tackle, and now it's a big play and a first down. Uh, there's a couple different things about this that I do find interesting on the call. One is just before the snap, they motion outside to in, and so you're switching it up here in the man-to-man responsibility. See how that works? So now one drops down and now the safety comes over. And later in the game, that's, I think, how they created some matchups on a safety that they wanted was by late motion and some of it pre-snap too. But what State's doing, the three down linemen are rushing. Right here, you're going to get a twist across and Pickering's coming to the outside, just trying to confuse a little bit on the interior. And you're bringing Buki Watson as a fourth rusher right here, okay, uh, with the back staying in. And also, if you look, what this looks like is edge defender linebacker, edge defender linebacker, like they're coming as a fifth and sixth rusher, but they're only just sort of stepping down and then dropping off to sort of pinch the edges here so that this quarterback can't just run freely either way from the pocket. So you're going to see that happen, right? So looks like six-man rush with man-free coverage. It's four-man rush with man-free coverage with I'm an edge and I'm an edge kind of underneath even though it's man, but we really are quarterback responsibility right here. Now, he doesn't get the ball out to an open first down right here on the route. Even if it's man coverage, you got somebody trying to run through on a pick and he doesn't get the ball out because I think he doesn't like the pressure, number one. But then when everything gets blocked up, watch what happens. It's man coverage, right? So initially, this running back is not out in the route. He's in protection. He's blocking. And so he gets lost. Whoever in this responsibility that would would have had him in man-to-man coverage had he released for a route, whether it's Buki, whether it's Jet, whoever, they've forgotten about him because now this play is off schedule and the quarterback is buying time. So everybody else in man-to-man coverage and nobody has him because initially he wasn't out in the route. So there's nobody with him. See that? Man-to-man responsibility. He doesn't have a man. Now everybody's focused on quarterback. And uh, he's able to buy time, find him late. It's a good play by the QB. And, um, you know, defensively, I mean, the biggest thing is that nobody gets – through on this initial rush right here. You know, your your gap over twist, you can see that happening. We're going to go across his face and bring Pickering around. They do an excellent job up front picking that up. On the inside, the back does an excellent job picking up Buki along with the tackle right here. I mean, this protection, you know, really can't be any better. And I'm sure that his coaches have told him, you got to know when you're picked up and when you're not and just standing there and throw this first down right here either here or here. But this is one of those where even the best quarterbacks, if you get blitzing linebackers and you're a little bit unsure of what the protection is, you'll hold that ball. Well, when you're fast, you can get away with it here. 
So I can't escape. They've got players on the edge, can't escape. And, you know, it's as early in the game, and, you know, it's a big defensive tackle, and it's a hot day, but, you know, Pickering's got to get on his horse right here and be a little more urgent in his pursuit of the quarterback right there. And that might have prevented the throw. So they got a new set of downs, motion over to that three receiver side. State did this some. I love the aggressive rotation defensively right here, throwing that little bubble. It's a screen, and this is an excellent job by Hunter Washington right here. You know, he, he's blocked uh, at the line of scrimmage. Watch him get off the block, throw it. He's, you know, you're beat now. And now Jet uh, pursuing, and you can pinch that. But out on the edge, if you can get off those blocks, it's hard to be, you know, that's the whole key. You want to defend screens, don't let them block you. They're going to put people in front of you, get through those. Uh, he didn't make the initial tackle, but four. Carlos Nicholson, who I think is playing pretty good football, comes screaming down the field here and cleans it up. Good play. All right, so second 13, they're going to run corner and flat underneath and just kind of try to read it and play it off this corner. If, if Nicholson drops, they'll throw underneath. If he stays up, and he plays it pretty well. He's got a guy over top of him. You can't see him on the screen. So his responsibility is up. A little soft right there, and he's reading. That's why he waited and kind of throws it to him late is because, you know, he, he's wanting to read that side for whatever reason, but you're going to run this corner right into a guy over here that we can't see. Nicholson's up, but he sort of baits him into the throw by staying up. He doesn't fly up initially. Um, throws it underneath. And now you got to come up and make the tackle. Catch. Good, strong tackle. Hang on. So now they're backed up on third down. Now on third and eight, and this is just really a heck of a play by the quarterback right here and a very aggressive defensive call. We'll look at it. They jump in straight zero man, bring seven. You can't block the safety, just tattoos the quarterback, but he still throws a strike on third and eight and gets it up there where you can make a decision on fourth down. State lines up with only two linemen with their hands down, wide split so that you've got room these two linebackers coming right up the chute. Everybody understands that. And then two off the edge. Okay, so that's six. See, so four here, two here. That's six. Knows that. He's got a six-man protection called and knows that's all he's got. So if this is all that comes, he knows he's got enough to pick it up. Six on six. Deal is, though, State's going to bring the seventh that they don't have a number for straight out of center field and play straight up zero coverage, man to man to man, everywhere else with no safety help down the field. And this safety in the middle here really gets there. Watch him time it coming down. You know, they pick up linebacker, linebacker eats up the combo. And as a quarterback, this is breaking down. I mean, you you're you got a knockdown on your back, you're gonna get outside here, and a straight screaming safety right up the chute in his face. Now look at the bravery right here. Watch him stand in here and make this throw. Now he didn't step into it, but he gets it out in time and it's really catchable. That is not poor coverage by any stretch. It's just he threw it to the back shoulder away and it's really in the one spot that could be completed. I, I was just really impressed with that play. They were able to, um, you know, basically like, you know, speed and sweep this thing off the edge here with a lead for a first down on fourth and two. It's really like toss. It's almost like running toss sweep out of the gun. Um, I guess that's a pass completion right there. But really, I think where they win it is that because of their formation, because of their bunch formation, you've got, um, what, yeah, three here with a tight end. So tight end with his hand down, up back, but the tight end is able to block a safety. So this is Marcus Banks, a converted corner. So this is a personnel thing where you got to be on the field because of coverage reasons, but it puts it in a scenario where a, a tight end is able to one-on-one -on -one block on the edge versus Marcus Banks, and it's just a big size and strength mismatch right there. So they get, um, they get head across on the defensive tackle with the tackle, but here you get a, a kind of a knockback, and that clears the lane because you're upfield with the safety on the edge. You see that? And so really that's what did it. And that's what did it right there. It was a tight ends block, cleared this up because he's up. Trying to get it from the backside, you get cut off, and you can't get in the hole fast enough here to make this play at the line of scrimmage. So they 
That's a personnel deal. All right, so you're going to lead with the back and roll the quarterback out here with uh, sort of like a, a little bit of a wheel pick going on. Now, they've got soft zone. I don't know that you're necessarily getting anybody open right here. But, but what gets you is tight end on the edge. And you're playing with a, a freshman tight end who was playing offensive tackle in high school last year, and he gets jumped on the route right here. He's stepping down in a gap, uh, but his head is inside, even though he's got inside help. So it's a little bit of a technique thing, an anticipation thing. And he allows this defensive end to swim him back to the outside, and now he's going to chase it down. Um, you need some help from the back as well. But that's what gets it. You know, it's a player just kind of – this is a defensive player who's being a, a football player. Like, he's seeing roll. I'm just going to get the ball carrier. And I got a tight end lined up on my outside shoulder. And he even steps like he's, you know, down in that gap. But when he sees where the ball is going, now he's going to chase it. So freshman tight end, he's got help to the inside. And instead of making sure I attack and seal that edge right there where we can at least get out here and, and run and see what happens – he just gets his head inside and let and gets pushed out of the way, and now he's gone. Okay, and so then the next thing we need is, even though this isn't his responsibility uh, necessarily on the play, we need him to feel that, sense that in his peripheral vision and get back inside and just make sure that my quarterback can run this play. And it's a little too late there. Urgency by the defender and a big sack. Ugly play. Second 17. And uh, he's trying to get some of it back. Got a little bit softer cushion on the corners. Three down. You got four lined up in there. So there's seven up in the box, but you got a tight end in the back. So you got seven in there as well. Motion in last minute to where you're going to get, you know, basically three with a tight end and two here. Kind of like empty with five man protection. They're only rushing four. Swim move on the inside. And again, not sure exactly what Will is expecting here. Because you don't have blitz. You don't have more than you can block. You got five man protect. They're only bringing four. There's nobody coming off edges or anything like that. And so I'm not sure exactly what you know he is expecting, other than there's something going on in his head as far as what the route should be, and there's something going on different in these heads as far as what the route should be. Because you're getting a little outside move, stick slant, upfield out route that take as a five step drop route. And he's throwing this almost like it's three-step hitch type deal. And I don't know if he sees something different than them, if they have a side adjust, if there's nobody underneath. I don't know what it is. But it's another example early in the game of a ball out of Will's hands thrown to nobody. And I do think he's rushing a little bit here, but he's got to because the center gets beat this time. Um, <clears throat> Cole Smith is against the, the shade nose who swims him. Okay, so you got plenty to block him, but watch. Right here you get, you know, left hand on the shoulder pad, get thrown across, right arm over. He's now in the gap. He's on the feet in the lap of the quarterback, and Will senses it. So even if he holds the ball here, he's going to have to avoid a guy pulling him down to the ground who's already on his feet because of a swim move over the center. He didn't have time to throw. Four-man rush versus five protect. So, um that's a big problem. First and 10. Interesting uh, play design and route concept here uh, to me. You're going to get, you got a three receiver side, well, three receivers and a tight end, right? So the pre snap formation is four, uh, um, what looks like receivers to the wide side of the field. Deal is only three are eligible because, you know, this one's on the line of scrimmage. So the tight end's covered up. He can't go out. What they're going to do is get the back from the opposite side out in the route as well and affect the read. It's, it's kind of interesting how they do this. And because he's on the line and the back's on this side, State's got to balance his defense out and they got to have edge coverage over here with the corner. And two deep safeties, deep corner there. So you see if that makes sense. And so what they're doing is running off with the two ups, verticals, okay? And then once they get that, they are deep corner – so intermediate with the third man inside, but pull the coverage up with the back from this side. It's really interesting how they got this done. And on the snap, State stepping one up in the gap so they can bring four. You're not getting pressure with three. The tight end's able to just seal right down inside. Okay, so you get him to the edge really quickly on a rollout, 
and now the back's underneath. So any underneath coverage over here, whether it's you know a linebacker or a safety, is going to be affected by the underneath, and it helps to get him over there open uh, with runoffs. You pull it up with the back, see that? So they're gone because of the runoffs. They're up, they see a back, and nobody's there in that sort of middle intermediate part of your coverage rolled by time wide open and again you look at it three receivers a fourth eligible and states just got wasted coverage over here people who can't even affect the play because it's going away from them and they're not threatened by anybody as well so a big numbers advantage for LSU uh, in the design of that play right there this is a pretty good look at the route gone gone and then up and get him outside um, run off and in the void nobody there good good design so on first and ten they line up in four wides two to the wide side and get the matchup they want and that's eight matched up on 21 who you know and, and Hunter he's been a little banged up as I understand it too states in man free coverage uh, bringing four and go ball over the shoulder, touchdown. Really nice throw and catch. Uh, he is beat. You know, in the coverage, the guy, you know, he runs by you. It's not like you got smoked. Right here, you're playing catch up, trying to get there, getting in position. You're in his space and not able to turn and find the ball because you got to run to catch up. Trying to get his hand between, you know, the chest and the football, but this is just a better throw and a better catch. Um, then the play by the, you know, the defensive back. And, uh, that's a really good throw and a really good receiver making a play right there on what is, you know, it's not the most, you know, wonderful coverage, but it's not bad either. He's just, he just, you know, gets outplayed for the ball. Man here um, on the hitch, man here over top. And so, you know, he stops and he's up. It's straight up, man. The safety's not a part of it. And I think right here you're getting shallow cross and then over as well. The back, you know, one of the linebackers is not in man, but I think they both are in a position. Like if he's here, then you're going to take him out of the backfield with Jet. If he goes the other side, then Buki's going to have that because you just rush him four. So it's just a kind of a balance of formation. Uh, throw a touchdown play is really what it is. Yep. Take the one on one, safety, safety stays in the middle, and it's all about the throw. Maybe just a little bit of an underthrow, actually. Um, and so. You're right there. Another step or two with him. Get that head around, maybe find the football and avoid giving up the touchdown. You know, in great protection, uh, this gives you a good view of the route and the coverage. And just throwing a one-on-one -on -one go ball. Washington's there. Just can't. He's, he, he needs, you know, if he's a foot closer, he makes a play on the ball, maybe bats it away and can't quite do it. Good protection also. Another look at it. Really clean pocket. You can see it kind of from the quarterback's point of view four-man rush combo center left guard everybody else is singled up I mean nobody around him you can live in that pocket all day long you don't have to be fast to play from that pocket for sure and then the other thing is you know when you look at the time he decides you know to let go of the ball I, he's not really reading safety over the top he knows he's got man-to-man -man, and this is just hey this is a matchup I like I don't need to see if he's open I'm putting it down the field and just going to depend on him to go find the ball and catch it. And that's exactly what happens. Really nice throw. All right, just to be totally honest here, not sure if this is, you know, straight up zone or if this is a power play because you do have an up back tight end blocking up in the hole. And then you do have a lead back too because you got two backs. So even though it looks like, you know, sort of like an outside zone deal, I, I would imagine it's probably, you know, some, labeled as some sort of power just because you do have leads outside and in and it is trying to go wide so when you watch it they don't get cut off on the backside and he's thinking cut back right here but it's not cut off backside and they've got numbers too because of your formation uh, what I mean by that is you got a tight end right so now there's six on the line of scrimmage you got two backs okay so now there's seven you got a backside H back, so now there's eight. So, you know, if he's getting the ball, which he is, we got eight blockers. Well, defensively, you're reacting to that pre snap. So, three with their hands down, a fourth walked up, five, six, 
seven, and then an eighth who's going to get involved here. So they're going to have bodies at the line of scrimmage. And, and, and frankly, until you show them you can beat them, they're not going to hesitate to play some man-to-man in this type of deal here. So one thing that happens is on the play, you know, you start this way and Witty's thinking, I'm not, I'm not bouncing this. I'm going to cut back here and see a lane in the backside of this zone type blocking, but it doesn't get caught off on the backside. I think this is uh, 67 Lewis, who he doesn't get it cut off and sealed on the backside. He gets beat on, on the inside gap right there. See that? And so 13, when Woody's now thinking, I'm going to look for this cutback lane instead of bouncing it play side, he's in the hole. And then also you do have, because of numbers, a linebacker who's trying to get in that hole too. So there's really – Ain't a whole lot of cutback there. And given that, you know, this is play side and you're good, hat on the outside right here by Bell, good strong one-on-one here by Dollar Bill, yes, you do have a defender who's jumping in and Dollar Bill's getting pushed wide, but if you bounce this, you got a chance to have a lead blocker and get this thing to the sideline. So, you know, probably I don't know this, but probably told here, take this thing wide, follow that lead block, get it to the sideline. Most likely. So that's your first down play. Uh, we come back on second down here. This time you get the rollout you want. You get free, and it's uh, not the best throw. I'll play it for you here. So play action away, right? Um, and, and bringing him across. That brings the guy down. He wants to hit the quarterback, right? So the play action away, and now we're going to be able to boot and get out of there. And here is that comeback route. You know, beyond the first down stick on second and ten, and this is one you got to put it on him. Underneath's not there. Yeah, you're getting chased, but you got to make an accurate throw. You know, up and the ball. If it comes out a little earlier too, you are getting chased here. But if you can get this ball out now, then you got a chance to put it on the stick. It's a little bit late coming out, so it's short of the stick. But we got to get this up where he can get his hand on it, catchable. That's a poor throw. So. They review this. You don't have a first down right here. Three by one. They got four on the line of scrimmage. Looks like cover three or some sort of it. You know, some sort of zone coverage. They're rushing four. We got a perfect play called on third and ten, and that's the screen right here. I think this is set up, and sometimes people don't understand the purpose of a screen. You may block one guy, but you're going to let some guys go on screens to to you want them to come get the quarterback to waste themselves because we're going to throw it behind them and run some of these linemen out in front of it as blockers. And that's why the purpose of a screen is the blockers are going downfield and the ball must be completed behind the line of scrimmage. We're going to let the rush come get us right here. And right there, there you go. So you got one Cole and, and another out in front. You're going to have one here to try to catch these guys coming play side. And if we can just get the ball to Woody here, it's got to be completed behind the line of scrimmage. And if we can get it to him, I actually got to play right here. See, if he catches this, then really all we need is this block if he catches this. And it's off and running. We may not make a first down, but we sure as heck might make a first down if we just put it on him right here. And so we got to get it to him. And, you know, again, there's a little awareness of knowing of knowing that he's not going to be past the line of scrimmage right here. All right, third and six. And so yard to gain, TV shows you that. And what you see is what looks like, you know, like a cover two uh, zone, you're going to rush four. And you'll notice that, again, that underneath coverage drops sort of at a level beyond the yard to gain, the line to gain. And so there's only one underneath route, but it's a really – Easy throw and catch right at the stick with everybody else running it off right here on uh, third and six. So four-man rush, they block that up pretty easily, but it's a one, two, three throw out of the gun, just catch and make the first after making a move. You know, and somebody might point to Buki Watson being there, and he does have a chance to maybe make the, the tackle, you know, right at the line. But if you look, again, look at the coverage drop. <clears throat> so pre-snap. Uh, two safeties splitting the ball, so it looks like two high safeties. And it does sort of look like a cover two zone to me. And uh, one of your nickel or your nickel is sort of the, the underneath. And you're going to rush Jet along with the three man rush right here. And so it drops two linebackers in coverage uh, Page and Watson. And both of those get pretty deep 
on the initial. You see him drop here and just kind of let that underneath route go. And that might be a mistake on the linebacker. It, you know, it would seem to me, especially on third down, you know, you get this in front of your face. If you're in underneath his own coverage, you got to jump it. It becomes man. And that's what they say, you know, about coverage is every, you know, every zone scheme at some point becomes man, right? Because you're not just in an area. You got to cover receivers. And this happens some during the game where, you know, third and seven, third and eight, third and six. LSU had eight of those opportunities in the game. They went four for those eight, so at 50%, and this sort of down and distance on third down. And this was happening a lot, like the yard to gain. And all the coverage gets behind it, and so it really made it easy on some underneath throws on third down. And I don't know what the answer is other than to match some of those routes by those inside receivers and backs in that situation. A good move, too, to make yards after the catch. And you kind of see it from quarterback's perspective right here. The, the middle of the field is really clean right here. You know, when you're trusting your protection, four-man rush, you know it's going to come out quick. You know, your eyes in the middle of the field, you see linebackers dropping, you know, three receiver side. He drops deep. I mean, I can already tell. If I know I've got a route in here, then I know it's about to be open. This is really an easy read and a confident throw. Just pump it to him, and here we go. It's just way too easy on third and six. So later, you flip the quarter. You got him in a third and three here to start the second quarter. And this is one where you just get him. Uh, they've got a tight end up here, so six on the line of scrimmage and going to read between quarterback and back. And I believe they are unblocking this defensive end. It's Anderson. You're going to read him on this particular play, and State just completely blows it up. And I'll show you a couple things about it. He's got some urgency jets there, so there's nowhere to quarter, uh, quarterback to go. So you get a big TFL on third and three. And there's a couple reasons why. Um, one is, again, I mean, just the play design. If that's what they're trying to do, you got tackle stepping down to get that first gap inside. And on pre snap, that was actually Jet lined up in that gap. See, uh, we're a long ways off, I know, here, but if you look, tackle is looking inside gap, is Jet, the linebacker, walked up in there. But on the snap, the first thing Jet does, he goes outside, right? Jumps around him. Well, because he's down inside and this on the snap, in man on the line of scrimmage, is unblocked. Again, I don't know if it's a bust or, or what, but they leave him unblocked as if they're going to read him. You see it right here. Steps through. See, because tight ends up on the first outside in case quarterback keeps. Well, he's unblocked. Quarterback's reading him. He plays it really you know, aggressively to kind of force an early read, and Jets jump to the outside. So he's right there in the run lane. So you can't give – you keep, you're blown up. State just had the right stunt and the right front called for this play on third and three. The other thing about this, though, it's it's third and three, and State gave them, you know, the zero, uh, this cover zero man look. Like there's no safeties in the middle of the field, none out here. And so here's like that matchup, right, on third and three. So they see it. They're going to try to run it, don't get it. So we fast forward to the fourth down play. This gave you a good look at it. You know, he's off the edge, unblocked. Their design is uh, tight end up. And again, I think by virtue of the safety being walked up pre-snap, it tells a tight end that's who you're going for as opposed to, you know, upfield and chipping him in any way. I, I don't know, but that's possible. The other thing, like I said, this split right here for these two down linemen, you got this big area where Jets walked up in the hole. And so if you're the tackle pre-snap, you're thinking, yeah, I'm down right here, and we're going to combo on this linebacker. The deal is, though, He's here, and they've got a stunt call with Jet jumping to the outside. So it's just, the, you know, again, it's like a perfect stunt call for the play they have called because, you know, you, you rush the mesh, and now there's Jet waiting on you, and there's nothing they can do about it. So now you come back on the next play. It's fourth and seven. Their 10-zip got all the momentum in the game, and it's down here on their end of the field, down here on, you know, st or on, on State's end of the field, deep in State territory. And here's that matchup. Now, it's not cover zero. This time you do have a safety in the middle. But he's in a position where if we outside release and run this off, I mean, he's not going to get there, right? He's not the athlete to get there. And it's man everywhere else. So it's like they call this. I, I would imagine it's called from the sideline thinking, if we get that matchup, you know, on a fourth and seven, they give us man again, we're taking it. And I wouldn't even be surprised. I don't know this, but I wouldn't even be surprised if – they lined up 
see what state's in defensively, and then decide if you're going to snap it or not. You know, right here. Maybe use timeout. They have one left. They don't need it. They've got the matchup that they had to play before. Get it, snap it, take it, uh, stem, outside move, outside throw. And this time he had more room than he did on the previous one. He's got about a yard of separation here, and the ball is up before you can get the hands up. And a perfect throw right on the goal line. Um, that's big time football right there. All right, so now look at this pressure uh, on Will Rogers. Second and eight, straight up the gut, hits him in the gut as he releases it. And it's got to be, you know, it, it forces a little bit of an early throw. Can't get your head around, find the football. If you, can't, if you do, it's first down, but can't do it. Um, and let's look at how they got this done. So pre-snap, State had two by two, but switched it, and you go motion across, and now it's three uh, by one. And it does not affect their call. I think they had this called regardless here, which is they've given you a look where it's three down, but four walked up, and the one walked up is to the weak side into the boundary on the left hash. But on the snap, he's rolling out, and you're bringing middle and down off the hash on the strong side, if that makes sense. So it's kind of twisting it. You know, you're bringing four, one right up the middle, but he's out on the snap and he's down on the snap. So trying to confuse your five-man protection, and it definitely uh, does work right here because if you see, you've got, um, again, five-man protect. He's coming up a gap center, and everybody's looking, you know, like gap left right here. Center's on the nose, you occupy him. What's not happening is the right side is not checking back to this gap at all. Part of that is because, you know, you've got one coming off the edge. You got five, but with him, you know, coming out, it's here. You're getting a combo on the guard. You're getting a single and a single, and nobody accounts for right over the center. So in your protection and in your design, that's got to account for that, right? It's easy to say, hard to do, but that's sort of the, the, the guts of any protection is right in here. There's, a, there's got to be a plan for, yes, nose, and then if linebacker comes, we check that, hand that off. There's, there's got to be a way to hand it off. And these offensive linemen can speak to it more than me. But now you see it on the snap. Again, it's only five rushers. One, two, three, four, and then five come in here. You got enough to block. But depending on the call, see, you, you're stepping left with center and left guard. You know, and he's checking to the outside. And I guess you felt like maybe that was an outside threat. The problem is the back is to that side. Here, you're stepping outside here, and now he's checking outside here. There's nobody, you know, working into that gap to the right. It's just totally void, and that's a protection breakdown, and it's either in what you're taught, what you're told, the way you've drawn it up. Now, and Will's doing all he can. He actually makes a really good decision right here to get it out in the area of a receiver, but because of the urgency of the linebacker, he doesn't make an accurate throw, can't make one. You know, if it's here, it's first down, you hit him in the face mask. Um, but he had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. And another example here, a lot of the same thing. This time it's third and eight. But if, if you look, similar to the previous play, back is on the left of the quarterback. Okay, so if he releases or if he blocks, you know, it's most likely the side unless he checks back, right? So he's left of the quarterback. And what are they doing here? Flying off the line of scrimmage here bringing one off the hash here. So sort of, you know, flipping that front on them and it gets them again. Causes confusion on the right side of your offensive line, can't pass it off, and just free to the quarterback on third and eight. And, you know, people will look at Will Rogers right here and, yeah, now, you know, what you want is process it a little quicker somehow, some way, maybe go ahead and get rid of the football, don't take the sack, Maybe somehow avoid the contact and, and get it out. But when you're reading downfield, waiting on a route on third and eight to get, you know, the shortest route you have is a nine, ten yard route. Well, he's not to his spot yet, and I'm getting hit. I'm a little bit helpless right here, unless, you know, I've got 
Jaden Daniels wheels and I turn and either make him miss or run out this way. Um, so it's right here. It's uh, If you look, you've got from the center over, okay, so here would be the line of the center. You got one, two, and three coming. And so in order to pick this up, and it if you're getting three away from the back and he's not able to check and help, then somehow one, two, and three, you got to block those three guys. Well, watch what they do. One's out on the outside shoulder of the guard. That's who slips through. And one's coming in, so you got to twist, and that's what sort of initially fouls up your protection. See, Lasoya 64, you know, he doesn't know if he ought to stick right here and hang or if he's passing him off to the tackle. Well, the tackle thinks he's passing this off on a twist. It's like he senses it, but he's not looking inside here because he's got one coming off the edge, right? So three over there confuses your protection, and and what you can't do is turn guys loose. You know, you're better off right here. In, in any scenario, you're better off, you know, leaning on protection in the middle, if guys come off the edge, we'll deal with that a little bit better than we will somebody coming through B-gap right here into my lap as a quarterback every time. And so another protection breakdown. Let's see what we got. That was third and eight. We'll get another look at it right here. So you can kind of see one, two, three, right? One, two, and three. And they've, they've split this thing. It's like, is it coming from here or is it coming from here? And the way they've kind of switched it up on you is line of scrimmage here and the boundary is out. And again, coming down off the hash. Uh, we'll watch right guard. So again, right here, typical twist without any outside pressure, what's going to happen, right? If he goes here, I'm going to pass him off to the tackle. If he comes in on the twist, we're going to pick him up. He's going to pass him off to me. And, I mean, right here, you snap the ball. Cole Smith's ready to help. He's ready to help. <clears throat> Step in the gap, stay on him. If he comes around, Cole's going to pick him up. That's, I guess, what, you know, should happen is you you stay here. He comes around, Cole's got him. You go outside and you get him. You got enough. But you turn him loose in that gap right there because there's a little bit of confusion and there's, too, you know, a lot of urgency. And you got one turning loose and one not looking for it, and you got no chance right here. Thanks for watching. Hit me up on Instagram. I'm Radio Wyatt. And if you haven't subscribed here, I hope you'll consider doing that. More stuff coming your way this week, next week, all throughout football season. Really do appreciate you. See you on the next one.